It's um, October 17, Sunday. We are at the Old City of Jerusalem and uh, uh, we are following the cross again. This is the Jerusalem cross, uh, which is a symbol of the city, the Holy City, actually of the Holy Land as well. Um, the idea of it is that the big cross, the big cross is Jerusalem, which is the center of the world, and the four others you can be whatever you want, four gospels altogether, five stigmatas. What I'm doing today, it's a regular video of the most important place for Christians in the world, the church of the Holy Sepulchre, the place that Jesus was crucified, died, buried, and resurrected. And um, you will get information about it. And we're gonna bless it. The one who, the family that I'm gonna bless it, they don't know that I'm going to do that. Then let me tell you, Dina and Art, Kirby, this is your day. You got it as a present. I won't say who, but I think that you know from whom. Then, um, Let's start a tour. What you can see here is the 12th century church. That church was built originally at the 4th century. Um, let's say that the day of the church was September 335 AD. But that church been destroyed so many times then uh, what you see here is mostly from the Crusader time and above. There are so many, um, so many chapels outside. For example, let's talk about Michael, the angel, Archangel Michael, which is a uh, um, Ethiopian church, and as you can see, the Ethiopians now entering into it until they will enter. The door to the left is on by the Greek Orthodox, and this is Mary the Egyptian. Mary was uh, the Egyptian, was uh, how should I say, naughty woman when she came to here and tried to enter the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. She was kicked out by the Holy Spirit because she was naughty. Um, she used to sell things, not fruit and vegetables. And then she got the message, I must repent. She became a nun and um, very important one. Then she's got her, she's got her own chapel right in front of it. I'll just show you the Ethiopian part. I love, love the smell here. I'm not going to enter this time to to the church, but I want you to understand that there are so many, there are so many people that who held the church of got part of it. Um, John of the Armenian is here, and this is dear Abram. Um, if we we'll go in, we will reach an amazing uh, huge water system in it, and. Above it, according to the Greek Orthodox, you can see an olive tree, and that olive tree is the place that Abraham sacrificed, uh, sacrificed Isaac. Now, it's all started with the Jews at Mount Moriah, which is the Temple Mount today, but almost everything was moved to here from, uh, from the Temple Mount. For example, Isaac and Abraham, which is on top of Mount Moriah, according to the Jews. Here there are three chapels of the Greek Orthodox, 
One of them, that one is dedicated to the 40 martyrs. And above it, you can see beautiful uh, bell tower built uh, by the crusader after they built that church. They added it. And now it's so funny because crusaders were Latin, but this is now a Greek Orthodox part. Something that I didn't actually did before, mainly because I'm afraid to fall, is climbing up the Franks um, uh, chapel. But before we will do that, let me talk about the gates here. First of all, when the Crusader built the gate, they built it very similar to the Golden Gates at uh, the Temple Mount. That's where um, Jesus entered the city on Palm Sunday. Uh, that's where Mary, uh, sorry, um, Elizabeth, no, 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 Joachim met, yes. No, it's, no, she's not Elizabeth, I forgot her name. Gosh, the mother of Mary, according to the uh, Evangelion and of James, Hannah, of course. They, uh, that's where they met the angel. They told her that they would have uh, the child. Then it's actually similar to it, but there was two entrances. First one there, second one there. And when the Crusaders built the church, they built that uh, chapel outside the church, and you could enter straight from here to the Golgotha. Sadly, you cannot do that again today. And let's climb together with that and Tina and Art, this is for you. Cannot see a lot here, but that's where they stripped Jesus from his clothes. It's part of the Via Dolorosa station, and the entrance to the Golgotha, to Calvary, was from there, sadly. Salhadin in the Muslim time, 12th century, decided not to destroy the church, but he blocked two of those entrances. And at the Muslim time, most of the time, the doors were kept by the Muslims. Um, they decided who will go in and who's not, and who will buy, and how much they will pay. And um, until today, the doors are owned by two Muslim families in that church. Before we will enter, um, here there's a tomb of Philip. He was the one who signed the Magna Carta, UK, 13th century as well. And if you're talking about graffiti, and you will see a lot of graffiti here. Look at the graffiti of uh, from uh, 1389, which is 14th century. Let's let me show it to you. I have to hold the cross. Here it is. Here it is. You can hear the bell. We will enter the church from here and don't worry we will actually visit that side but we are doing it according to the story and according to the story we are climbing up because what's happening here Jesus was crucified and then died been buried and of course resurrect. Today it's quite a crowded day, many weeks it's Sunday. And all the, not all, but a lot of the Christians of Israel are arriving 
to the church. Now the church belongs to everyone except of some of the Protestants. Then in that case you can find here Greek Orthodox, Catholic, uh, Ethiopians, um, Armenians, um, I'm sure that I forgot some like Coptic and more. Yes, there is another option for that church, and this is the garden tomb. Some of the Protestants believe that that cannot be the church, mainly because it's inside the city, and uh, Jews have been buried, and the Bible actually mentioned it, outside the city, outside the walls. But let me tell you that that church um, was built 400 years after Jesus was uh, ascended into heaven. And now it's 2,000 years after Jesus ascended into heaven. And the city is all so different. It might be that it was outside the walls. And for that later on, I will try to show you real tombs, Jewish tombs, that tells you that it used to be a cemetery. The beautiful mosaic wall is from the 18th, 19th century, 1890, end of 18th century. There's a beautiful story that starts with Noah, the first um, the Noah and the Ark, and Abraham and Adam and Eve are somewhere here, which is the first uh, scene. And you can find here four uh, prophets that, uh, and one king actually, three prophets and one king that uh, that talks about the uh, future coming of Christ. Uh, for example, Ishai, Isaiah, Isaiah uh, Daniel, Zechariah, and of course King David, that he came from King David. The most important part here is the ascension of Jesus, which is from 12th century. The rest is totally new. Um, the Frank's Chapel, the one that they stripped his claws from, is right here. We actually saw it from there, but here you can see it even better. And did I not? Here it is. Of course you will get that cross. Here, you can see a beautiful altar at the place that they nailed Jesus into the cross. And this is a gift from the Medici family, 16th century. Medici from um, Italy. But look at the beautiful mosaic. Jesus is on the cross. Mary Magdalene is anointing his legs. Mother is above him, and the Roman soldier is next to him. That place, you can see the uh, John and the Marys, we go <laughs> backward, watching the crucifixion, and it's so important to understand that the Catholic knows that it was outside the city, and here it is, you can see the walls of Jerusalem. Even the four Gospels here, one, two, another two is there, and St. Peter, St. Paul, and the most important thing, Salvas Mundi. Jesus has a cross and 12 disciples. In the Greek Orthodox, can find another chapel and this is Mary with a spear in her heart. Lena Alt, the cross is here. I don't 
don't want to disturb the people standing in the line here. But let me tell you that when Mary was at the temple for the presentation of the temple, which is a Jewish tradition, she heard from Simon the priest that a son, Jesus, will die in front of her eyes. It will be like a spear in your heart, and here it is. We are moving, we are leaving the Catholic part, and we are reaching the most important part here, the crucifixion place, which is um, Greek Orthodox part. We are sort of Greek Orthodox, but um, everyone's got a permit to, to pray here, of course. What you can see here, beneath the glasses, is the Golgotha, the Calvary, the crucifixion place, and that woman, and now that man, will reach the exact point of the crucifixion. Remember that at 3 o'clock the earth will shake down here. You can see the creek, which is part of it. To the right of Jesus, you can see John. To the left, you can see Mary. And while Jesus was on the cross, he asked John to take care of his mother. At the Crusader time, the pilgrims used to put a lot of small crosses, wooden crosses, on it on the Calvary, and the uh, priest used to collect it and burn it down on uh, Saturday. Why it's um, covered with uh, glass? Uh, because people want to take some souvenirs, and we cannot do that. Many years ago, like at least 10 years ago, you could see menorah at the front of, uh, just in front of the crucifixion. A menorah is a symbol for the Jewish temple, and this is, in a way, the new temple. On top of Jesus, you can see four letters, three different languages. Jesus from Nazareth, King of the Jews. Look at the beautiful language and stories above it. You think that it's art, but it's not. It's actually a book. You can see here Jesus scaring the cross. For example, you can see here Saint Simon uh, or uh, Veronica. Jesus at Herod. Beautiful, isn't it? Nailing to the cross. Just a beautiful language. We're living the um, Calvary de Golgotha through the exit, which is at the Greek Orthodox. You can see here a beautiful mosaic wall. Um, it was built by the Greek Orthodox. After the earthquake of 1927, they started to build here a wall for that it was open, and later on, 20th century, they cover it with it. Uh, but it's beautiful. Then you can see the crucifixion place. We were been there, and that's where they crucify. Uh, sorry, purify the body of Christ. Um, as a Jew, they had to do that at the same day. They just, that's why Joseph of Arimathea 
and Nicodemus asked Pontius Pilate for the body of Christ and they purified it. You can see the nails here. And they cover it with a shroud. See Mary, see Mary and Mary Magdalene above her. And then they bury him in Joseph over over Amitya tomb, which was close to the um, crucifixion place according to the book of John. That might answer the question, how can it be that the crucifixion was next to the tomb, or the tomb was next to the crucifixion? Before I will purify it, let me tell you that if you want to, if you didn't subscribe me until now, please do that and push the the button, the ring, ring the bell, and you will get the latest videos of mine, and I do have around 19,000 videos. This is the place that they purified Jesus, that's why that woman is now blessing him, and that's why Lina and um, Art are going to bless it as well. It's filled with oil. The anointing hall. Let's continue, please. We so, saw um, Franciscan monk, and this is a Greek Orthodox. Um, it shows you that there are so many, uh, so many people held, hold her. Uh, that church, and if you talked about so many, this is Armenian chapel. According to the Armenian, the three Marys looked at the crucifixion from here. And if you see those candles, um, lighting candles for my subscribers or anyone else who wants, if you want to do that, if you want me, uh, me to do that, go into the description and you will see the link for buy me a coffee. And then you can write me whatever you want. And I will do that. I'm doing it twice a month. I just did it today and it was so amazing because it was together with um, liturgy, Sunday liturgy of the Greek Orthodox and the Cyrenic Church and the uh, uh, Coptic. All together, I mean, it's for me, it was a festival of Holy Spirit. The dome is right above you, and you can see 12 sun rays, and each, at the end of each of them, you can see three um, points, like the Trinity, and the tomb. The tomb is only from uh, 1808, and mainly because at um, 18, actually 1810 or 89, in 1808, uh, there was a fire here that destroyed the dome and they had to renovate the uh, tomb as well. But the tomb been destroyed a few times, earthquakes and people who didn't like it, you know, enemies of the Christians. Sadly, I cannot go into the tomb uh, with you, with the camera, but later on after I will... Uh, um, after I will um, finish that video, I will enter together with the cross. Um, but meanwhile, I'm blessing it here. Then let's talk about what we can see from here. There are two chapels here. The first one is of the angel, and you can see a um, candle that is part of the holy fire. The inner part is the tomb, but she is taking a picture, I don't want to disturb her. Um, uh, it's a beautiful sarcophagus with 38 uh, lamps. It belongs to the Catholic and the Greek Orthodox, the Armenian and Coptic. And um, now let me, I will give you another minute, if not, uh, all right. 
And you can see here the entrance. The second part is the tomb himself. The first part is uh, part is of the angel chapel who took care that no one will steal the body of Christ. The second part is the tomb himself, but it's empty as you understand. Now, for me it's so important, and let's hope that I will do that. I will be able to do that. Yeah, I will. It's important to enter to another chapel here that belongs today to the uh, Armenian, but the Cyrenic has got um, rights there as well. And uh, although it doesn't look like a beautiful place, it's important for me because it's, um, uh, there's a tomb in there. Now we find evidence here from the first temple time, but this is for sure a tomb from the time of Jesus. That actually shows us that there were tombs here. Why here? First of all, because it was outside the city. Remember, the Jews are not buried, they're dead um, there. I mean, out in the city. Secondly, uh, it used to be owned by the government, and the last one who owns that place was King Herod, and when he died, um, people started to use it as a garden of Joseph of Arimathea, and, um, and tombs. Then here it is. There's a tomb here. First of all, let me bless it for you. And I'm not sure that you will be able to see a lot from here, but believe me, there's some niches here. And the Jews have been buried there. And this is, I'm talking about only the important and uh, um, rich Jews. Why important and rich? Mainly because, um, you know, poor people couldn't afford themselves a rock cut, a tomb. Let's say that there were five niches. What will happen for the sixth body? There's no more place. They will take the body out, and then they will put the bones of the dead man, the first one who'd been buried there, in a kind of a, um, so, um, a box, an osary, and they will put it in the room. And they will bury the new one, there. Why it's important? Because the Bible mentioned that Joseph of Arimathea gave Jesus his own tomb. Listen carefully for that. That no one used before. Ta -da -da. Then in that case, if that was the garden of Joseph of Arimathea, and he gave Jesus his own tomb, and we are watching it, it means... that that part might be the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, maybe Nicodemus as well. But what is important for us to understand that there are tombs here, and that actually answer my friends at the garden tomb that believes that it can be, I mean, that tomb cannot be the tomb of Jesus, but I'm not going to argue about it. Um, what I usually say, go to those both places and pray. Both of them are amazing. Uh, when I'm taking my, my daughter to the garden tomb, she usually said I'm talking with angels there. Although the tomb is the last uh, Via Dolorosa station, the 13th one, I believe that uh, there is another Via Dolorosa station after the resurrection of Christ, and I'm talking about Mary Magdalene meets Jesus. 
then first of all, let me bless the cross. And if you want to know how to buy that cross and you want me to bless it for you, go to buy me a coffee and look at the extras and you'll find all the, um, all the information about it and you can always ask me. I think it's a very nice uh, um, souvenir that here Jesus was standing. When Mary, Madeline, met him. Beautiful chapel of the Catholic, but it, um, it's closed now. Let's continue our tour. It's already 30 minutes, wow! But it's important, isn't it? What actually happened to Jesus when he reached that place, but you know, he, he's supposed to wait for his crucifixion. He wasn't the only one. Then, according to the Greek Orthodox, this is the prison. Here, here he was waiting for his crucifixion. Or, it's not, if it's not here, the idea that he was waiting is important. Oh, beautiful, isn't it? Another version of Jesus suffering. It looks like that. He was sitting in kind of a pit with his legs in. He was tied in his hands. And the chapel is right here. This is, this is a horrible picture. So sad, isn't it? I like icons. I really like icons. You can see Jesus and Mary. And here, you can see Jesus as well. Let me bless it. I cannot feel the agony of, mama, of the mother. I can feel it. All right, there's a ceremony there. It begins. You can see it's a Catholic ceremony. Let's bless ourselves there. Look at that, can you hear it? What you heard is um, a wooden knock. They uh, knock in a wooden way um, until 1835. The Muslims didn't let the Christians use um, the bell. Then in that case, oh wow. In that case, they used to knock on the wood, and until today, they are knocking on the wood. Now, you saw the Greek Orthodox 
using the incense inside the tomb of Jesus. Is going out now. And now the Armenians are coming. You heard the knock on the wood again. I know that it sounds like so strange that in, in one church, it's one church pronounces so many, but this is the most important church for 90% of the Christians in the world. He will go out soon. And there's next, the Coptic. See that and the entrance to the Greek Orthodox monk, remember, although they have rights with others, he owns it. Alright, let's continue our journey in the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. We did a lot, remember? Did you already subscribe my channel? If you have some questions, please don't hesitate. Please ask me. You are my family. You are my tourist now. We are at the ambulatorium. Actually walking around the church. He's talking about the chapel, then I will switch to the chapel. Oh, the incense of those priests are amazing. And here they are, doing the same thing. Let's bless her. He's waiting, as I believe, for the 
Greek Orthodox monk to go out from the chapel that we are going to visit soon. Mm, love the incense. And here we see, then you will see the Greek altar and the Armenian together, blessing each other. How many are blessing yourself as well? Beautiful Armenian chapel is in front of you. And the next one will be the Coptic. And you can see the Israeli soldiers. What are they doing here? Traveling. Now he will wait for the um, Armenian to climb up. And then we'll do that soon. And soon we will actually walk there too, but let them uh, finish their ceremony in Yadulimata. I can hear the other one. I wish it, I could send you the smell of the incense. I love it. I can live in that church. Where are you? Here he is. They will greet each other as well. And now we will continue down together with the Coptic and across. Oh, look at the Crusader graffiti. Remember there are so many graffiti here? Now the soldiers are leaving the chapel. And we reach the Armenian chapel of St. Helen. But before that, I want you to see him and the soldiers. Lesson the place that they found the Holy Cross, the true cross. And he been blessed us. Lina of you have been blessed. That chapel belongs to the Armenians, but you will actually say, say to me, the Armenians is a small nation, a few millions of people, but how can it be that they have a lot of places in the church? The Armenians were uh, converted to Christianity many years before Constantine did it to the rest. Here you can see Gergolios, which was a prisoner for so many years because he believed that he um, he believed in Jesus and uh, um, this is the king. The king is in the water, being blessed, being baptized by by uh, Gregorius, the lighter, the one who 
right, people? And the rest of the nation are there. Soon, they will, uh, he will baptize them as well. Then in that case, we are talking about uh, a very important issue. In that mosaic floor, you will be able to see Arat, Noah Ark, and nine cities that most of them been destroyed when people were killed by the uh, Ottomans, the Turkish of the day. Sadly, not everyone recognizes it, but we will. It was made by uh, a Jewish um, uh, woman. According to what we believe, here, you could find the chair that St. Helen, when she discovered the, uh, the cross, uh, she sat here. Before we will reach the place that she, will find, she found it, let me tell you that this is the chapel of Vertan, and it leads to a few things. First of all, remains from uh, Adrian Temple, which was, which was built on top of the crucifixion place, and the tomb, and there is a graffiti of a boat from the second century uh, that says, Lord, we just left, we are living. Is it one of the first Christian graffiti in the world? Maybe. Heracles, one of the Caesars of the sixth century, brought back the um, cross that the Persian took from that church. I'm talking about the true one. A friend of mine, I won't mention a name, but it starts with B, really likes that place, and she asked me to light the candles at the day of it. I lighted 33 candles for her. Just here, you can see St. Helen, and the Russian speakers are at the site of the, uh, that's where they found the cross. But it used to be a quarry uh, from the first century. The part of Jerusalem was uh, built with those stones, beautiful limestones. You can see that it looks like a quarry. And later on, it was serve as a um, water system. You can see here the plaster that cover the limestone and the bucket salts. I'm gonna bless it. Amazing, isn't it? Let me just put there as well. I started to climb up around 40 stairs, but I'm following the cross of Jerusalem and I'm following the smell of the incense that I'm in heaven, God I'm in heaven. Lila, 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 lam. By St. Helen Chapel. By my dear Armenians. The 
there's one place, important place that we must visit before we say goodbye. <coughs> you can see here the Greek Orthodox chapel with the mocking stone, that's where they laughed at Jesus. You know what? Let's bless it. There are two. That used to be the original stairs for the Golgotha from the crucifixion time. But later on, the Greek Orthodox built another option, which we use today. It's a part of the Golgotha. We've been on top of it. And we enter to another chapel. This is the chapel of Adam, first man ever. Now, what's the connection between Adam to, to here? Adam and Eve, it's the original sin. Jesus came to repair it. He came for it, he came for us. Before you were left with me and say, how can it be that we found the tomb of Adam? Some people believe that Adam was buried in heaven, in the garden of Eden, uh, Eden of, but after the flood, they buried him, him. True or not, it doesn't matter. But what you can see here, a creek, a result of the earthquake uh, of uh, the Golgotha rock, and If you remember, three o'clock when he died, so many people resurrect. Um, one of them, according to tradition, or according to the Bible, was Adam. Here, in that area, at the crusader time, they used to bury the kings, the Baldwin the first and the second was buried here. Now it's, it's not there anymore. And according to what we know, beneath the um, that wall, there were more tombs of the Crusaders. Before we say goodbye and we make a round tour, let's see who is chanting now. Let's see if I can see it. Or it's the Armenian. It sounds like the Armenian. And if it's the Armenian, it's usually at the second goal that we call it chapel, which is there. Let's go out, and again, if you reach that point, it's like almost an hour, I want you to write me and to tell me that you're the brave who watched that video until the end. Amazing, isn't it? Let's wait for them to go out. Here we are. Church of the Holy Sepulchre <laughs> from th th 335 AD until 2021 still exists. Amazing. See you in my next video. Bye bye.